My name is Donna. I'm originally from Madras in Ayrshire, and I'm here today to tell you the story about my beautiful godmother and auntie Fiona. My Fiona and Uncle Jim didn't have any children, so all their nieces and nephews were like their surrogate child, you know. Even just at their house, it was always all the cousins would always would sleep over and. They would make dens for us, we had our own rooms up in the, like, we were always, we knew we always had a bed there at Matty Fiona's house, like, you know. They were, and they were like that with everybody. It was, that was, that was their thing. She'd been suffering with uh, COPD. Uh, she'd had that for a while. And then in February, she went into hospital. She was really struggling to breathe and stuff. Just towards the end of May, they told her it was it was cancer she had and she had to go for it like more intense to see but when they went when she went and got that they realized that it was a small cell lung cancer but it was in her right lung um, it was in her lymph upper and lower lymph nodes it was in her liver so we kind of knew then that I was like, but the, the nurses are going to come in. And I think she was a bit apprehensive, actually, until she met Stacey. And then she was like, oh, actually, that is going to be fine. You know, I mean, if they're just coming in, we thought that they would totally take over the care. But they, like Stacey explained to us, it's completely up to you how you want this to unfold, you know, like how you want your care. And we were, at that stage, she was still able to care for herself. I had been away in Blackpool and then I come back up and I knew as soon as I looked at her, I was like, no, it's, it's time for the hospice. So I went into the room and she was lying in the room and I just said to her, look, is it, is it time? She went, yeah, it's time, darling. And I was like, right, shall I phone Stacey? And she was like, yeah. So I phoned Stacey um, and then she came back later that day and she said she's going in tomorrow morning. But the last couple of days have been stressful because obviously we're no carers, you know, we don't know, like, I felt like I was not lifting her properly, I felt I was scared in case I hurt her, you know, and it was just like, that we kind of keep doing this, you know, it was like, it was a lot of pressure. As soon as we walked in and Fiona was in the room and the nurses had got her all settled and, oh, wow, it was a big relief because they were caring for her and it was, Honestly, it was just like a weight had been lifted off our shoulders. It was like, oh, you know, now we can just spend quality time. Like I said, my perception of the hospice when I first went in, I was, I was apprehensive because I didn't know what was, what was in front of us. You know, it's all a bit daunting. But then the minute I seen the care that they were given, the difference it makes to the family. I just knew that, I had, and it's not just the nurses and the doctors, it's done to everybody, all the catering staff, you know, everybody that works at that hospice is just there to make life easier for you. And that's what I felt. It, it made the heartbreaking, I mean, and it is a heartbreaking journey that we, that we went through with Matty Fiona, absolutely heartbreaking. But it, it made that heartbreaking journey a bit more easier to deal with. I can't thank them enough for the, the way that they were with Fiona. They just, they got her straight away. They had laughs with her, which was great, you know, and nothing was too, too serious, you know. It was like they, they had banter with her and she loved that. Like, that, that's great to hear because we don't know how long she's got, you know. Matty Fiona's sister was there, my Uncle Jim was there. And, and then they two went out and I just, I just had a good talking to her, like, you know, and I just said what I had to say. And then so Jim and Eileen came back in again and I went out for a walk, just outside for some fresh air. And then my Uncle Jim came out just after and said, that's her away hen. And it was, it's a strange feeling, 
but then, I mean, even after that, the nurses were great ways, you know, like, we could stay in the hospice as long as we wanted, you know, they were like, you don't have to leave here until you feel ready to leave, you know, because it's... I do think, obviously, some people must feel like, no, I just want to get away, and then other people don't want to go because the person's still there, you know, so, like, I love the fact that they made it our choice. Well, it first, it first started when we were in the hospice and I had said, right, I'm going to do a skydive because I knew the hospice needed funds. And then it was one of the nurses that said, you do realise that you've said that out loud? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I have, yeah, I'm going to do it. So finally I got a date for the 24th of January and uh, that was, I, I, that, when I went up that time then, that was when I got to do the jump, which was amazing. <laughs> so, and we raised a lot of money, which was good. But once I had said it, I knew I had to go through with it. And although on the day I wasn't nervous, I didn't feel one bit of fear, and it was absolutely amazing. But I think that's because my auntie was with me <laughs> when I done it. <laughs> People should donate money to the Usher Hospice because it is vital that people still get this care. This care is so important, especially when you've been through and been told the worst news that you can be told and trying to get your head around it and like they help you with all that, you know, like it's they just, it's, they're so special. And that was for you, Auntie Fiona. Love you, miss you every day.